interesting. Hey, I want to watch the news. Are you making are you making headway at least? This is the news. Come on, God, it is time for the only news that matters on Black Sabbath Sunday. Yes, Black Sabbath released their debut album in 1970. And as we know, it changed the face of rock and roll forever. The album was recorded in October of 1969, which makes this year, 2024, the 55th anniversary of the recording of this iconic album. To celebrate, here are four facts about the album you may not have known, or you may have known. See, some of this I knew, and some of this I didn't. So, hey, hopefully some of you don't know some of these facts, and you learned something here on Black Sabbath Sunday. Right on. All right. First, the cover photograph for Black Sabbath's debut album was taken by Keith Stewart McMillan. And at the Maple Durham's water mill on the River Thomas in, in uh, England, the mysterious cloaked person in the photograph was a mystery until 2020 when it was revealed in Rolling Stone that the model's name was Louisa Livingston. See, this is something I, I knew. I remember for years nobody knew the whereabouts of this woman. I, I think it was earlier than 2020 they discovered her, but hey, I may be wrong. 2020 is already four years ago. Maybe it was 2020. But yeah, they found her, man. And uh, according to McMillian, Livingstone was actually uh, a nude underneath the black cloak, and some experimentations was done involving some slightly more risque photographs taken at the session. We decided none of that worked and uh, kind of sexuality took away from the more foreboding mood, but she was a terrific model. She had amazing courage and understood what it was I was trying to do. The foreboding mood was well received and the cover stands as one of the most iconic in metal history. As for Livingstone, she was only 18 or 19 years old when the photo was taken. She ended up releasing electronic music under the name Indreba, you know, a, a soothing of the words, uh, incredible drum band, and uh, spreading anti-vaxxer memes on Twitter. Okay, I don't want to get political here. <laughs> I'm just reading what this broad is doing, man. All right, here's the next story, and I knew this. Uh, a U.S. psychedelic rock band called Coven released a song called Black Sabbath in the summer of 1969, and their bassist was named Oz Osborne. At the time, Black Sabbath was called Earth. They changed their name to Black Sabbath in August of 1969, only a few months after Coven released their song of the same name. Coven later went on to record a top 40 hit, uh, One Tin Soldier, which appeared in the movie Billy Jack. Their debut album was titled Witchcraft Destroys Minds and Reaps Souls. And they also used the sign of the horns in their performances before Black Sabbath. Furthermore, the promotional poster for Black Sabbath's debut album is strikingly similar to the previous promotional poster for Coven's debut album. Rolling Stones described Black Sabbath's debut album as a blend between Cream and Coven and said that they were the English response to Coven. In spite of all this, Tony Iommi has denied that they were that they knew about the band Coven prior to the release of the debut album and insists that any similarity between the two groups was strictly coincidental. All right. <clears throat> Before I go on to the next one, I will say that Jinx, the singer of Coven, is on my is a friend of mine on Facebook, and we I mean we haven't talked in a long time, but we used to talk a little bit. She's a very nice lady, and I sent her this because uh, I knew I already knew because of her talking about how she knew Iomi 
and they were all friends and stuff back in the day though I mean they haven't talked in decades but I'm just saying I sent her there was an interview Tony Iommi did on MTV with Martha Quinn where Martha Quinn held up the Coven album and Naomi's like I don't know I've never this is the first time I heard of this and she was like oh come on give me a break so yeah maybe maybe Black Sabbath stole their name from the song Black Sabbath don't not you know not 100% sure but for Iomi to but then again this was during the seven star era and you know Tony at that time was gacked out of his brain on you know he was really gacked out he was doing the drugs very heavy at the time but uh so maybe you know maybe he didn't remember or stuff like that maybe it's the cocaine wiped out his brain's memory on some parts who knows all i know is that it's extremely coincidental and yeah the singers i mean the guitar player or bass player is called oz osborne that's extremely coincidental and yes they were doing the sign of the horns coven now, before Dio was doing the sign of the horns, Geezer Butler was doing it way back in the 70s, and he even said that he told Dio to do it. Dio said later he got it from his grandmother. Who knows? All I know is Geezer did it back in the 70s, and even before Coven, John Lennon did it during the magical, not magical mystery, uh, uh, Yellow Submarine era. He was doing the sign of the horns. Even his little cartoon is doing the sign of the horns on the album cover. And I know uh, this has caused some, oh, it was just the way he stood. But no, I've seen two separate pictures of Elvis Presley doing the horns, but some people don't. I mean, I'm sure Elvis wasn't doing it, you know, for Satan. I know Coven did, and who knows, maybe uh, John Lennon did, I don't know. He's a wacky beetle, the king of the hippies. All right, for now, I am going to rank the songs off the first Black Sabbath album. Absolutely love this album. And here we go. At number eight, actually, I add Evil Woman and Wicked World. I know both those aren't together on the album, but, you know, one version had e Evil Woman, which I didn't know for many, many years. I had the version with Wicked World. So at number eight, at the very bottom, I will put Evil Woman. It's a cover, and it's not bad. It's all right. At seven, a lot of be a lot of people will be surprised by this, but I will tell you this: I think this song is awesome. I am just so sick of it. I am more sick of this song than Paranoid or Iron Man or any Black Sabbath song. I'm not sick of uh, War Pigs at all. But at number seven, The Wizard, not a bad song, but I am sick of it. I really am. I'm not one of these people that, oh, I'm sick of it because they play it too much on the radio. No, I'm sick of it because I play it too much. I play that album too much. I play Sabbath all the damn time. I will not skip The Wizard, but I'm sick of it. And that's why it's all the way at number seven. And number six, even though it goes together with Warning, but I separated them, Sleeping Village. I love Sleeping Village. All these songs, I'm not sick of. Number five, Wicked World. Love Wicked World. Uh, number four, Behind the Wall of Sleep. Awesome damn song. Absolutely love it. And number three, Basically Slash NIB. Amazing tune. Amazing riff. And number two, What Started It All, man. Black Sabbath, The Invention of Heavy Metal. Fuck Blue Cheer. Black Sabbath invented heavy metal. Anybody that says Blue Cheer invented heavy metal, what are you, racist? What the hell was Blue Cheer doing that Jimi Hendrix didn't do before Blue Cheer, okay? All right? Okay, well, number two. Number one, even though it's a cover song from the Ansley Dunbar band, Warning. Ain't it weird, Ansley Dunbar, amazing drummer. The guy that later on went to play with Journey and uh, White Snake and I believe Steph Jefferson Starship, but he had a band back you know, before Black Sabbath that had a song called Warning that you could hear here on YouTube. You can hear it. The Ansley Dunbar Band, Winning, I mean Warning, awesome song, and it's my favorite. 
It's my favorite. I love every second of that song. I love all those long guitar solos Tony does. Just an amazing long ass song. So there you go. That's the only news that matters. I want to thank you all for watching. And leave your comments below what you feel about, you know, did you know all these stories? Did you know some of them? You know, just leave it below in the comments below. And hey, if you want to rank the first album, I'd love to know what you think. And uh, like the video. It's good for the YouTube algorithms. And subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Please do that. And stay frosty. Listen to Black Sabbath and smack them a gob. Farewell and adieu to you fair Spanish ladies. Farewell and adieu to you ladies of Spain. For we've received orders for to sail back to Boston. And so never more shall we see you again. <laughs>